receive that word today. Well, amen, amen. Let us just pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. This, this is a beautiful day, Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We come to rejoice and be glad in it, Father Lord. As we drove here this morning, Lord, we saw the sun shining, the leaves changing colors, Lord. We just see you all in the atmosphere, Father, and we feel your presence already in this place. But we pray, Lord, that you're coming to this place in a powerful way. Bless the faithful people of God as we lift up your name and praise you, Lord. And we believe, 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 Lord, that you are a great God, and that's what we proclaim today. We pray all these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God shout.
Oh, we bless the name of the Lord this morning. Amen. We have so much to be grateful for. And because we have so much to be grateful for, I don't know about you, but this morning I just have a hallelujah in my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah acknowledges who he is in our lives and what he means to us. And so this morning, we say hallelujah, salvation and glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. For the Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. Yes, the Lord.
God is wonderful. Why don't you stand on your feet and give God a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Will you do me a favor and just bow your heads in a moment of thanks unto God, thinking unto God, thanking God that we can say hallelujah, salvation and glory. Thanking God for making a way. You know, we should sing that song, He Made a Way. When my back was against the wall, He made a way. When I was going through a tough moment, he made a way. When I had some tough ailments or tough things going on in my life, God made a way in my life. I want you to take the time to come forward and just come to the altar as we go to God in a word of prayer. This is a great time in our worship experience to just pray to God, to just bow your heads and to, first of all, thank God. You know, we would be remiss not to come to church without thanking God for all that he's done for us. Maybe it's your health, maybe it's your strength, maybe it's your job, maybe it's on your family. But I want to tell you today that God has made a way in my life. And I know there's a few people in the audience that can say God has made a way in yours too. If God has made a way, somebody needs to say hallelujah. If God has made a way, somebody needs to say glory. Because God is a good God. He's a great God. So this is a great time to bow our heads and thank God. For what we have thank God that we made it even to this time of the year we're approaching the end of the year in 2022 there are some people that were here earlier this year that didn't make it but God showed you grace and because of God's grace we should just bow our heads and say Lord you're good Lord you're awesome Lord you're mighty you didn't have to wake me up this morning you didn't have to start me on my way but God you woke me up you put purpose in my life and you put some steps in front of me, Lord. You blessed me to make it here even in my car without a car accident. Somebody needs to shout glory. Because what we have and what we live, the way we live is not guaranteed. But it's by the grace of God and by God's goodness. Pray right now for your neighbor. There's somebody standing next to you. You don't know what their needs are. But you know what God can do in their life. So pray that God makes a way. Pray that God makes an opening. Pray that God helps them through their nighttime situations. And even through their nighttime hours, we can say God can help us through. There's somebody here that needs healing. I want to say in the name of Jesus that God can heal you. There's somebody in this place that needs deliverance. I want to tell you, I believe that God can deliver you. There's witnesses all over the place today of what God has done in their lives. And if God can do it for them, God can do it for you. So why don't you just pray for a moment as the choir just sings this song. He made a way. He made a way when your back was against the wall. Yes. Let's talk to God.
Father, today you've heard our prayer. You've heard our cries. We claim today that you are going to make a way. We believe, God, in your healing. We believe in your deliverance today. There's somebody in this place that came here in need. There's somebody in this place that came here needing some answers. I pray, Father, that you would give answers, God. Continue to heal the brokenhearted. Continue to heal the sick. We pray right now for our city and our nation. We pray right now for those that are hungry, those that are sick and shut in, and those that didn't make it out today. We pray, God, that you would heal their bodies and help their soul, even on today. Father, again, we'd be remiss not to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, again for waking us up. Thank you, Lord, again for food on our table. Thank you, Lord, again for clothing on our back. If it had not been you that was by our side, we would not be here today. And so we can't just lift you up enough because you've been a great God. You've been a marvelous God. You've been a mighty God. And Father, you've made a way. And so, Father, we lift you up. We magnify you today. When we turn it over to you, when we lay it at your feet, we don't have to worry about it. We can go back to our seats with a smile on our face because we know that we gave it over to the Lord. And when we give it over to the Lord, that's when the breakthrough is going to come through. When we give it over to the Lord, that's when the healing comes. When we give it over to the Lord, that's when the deliverance will come. When we give it over to you, that's when we're feeling in our spirit that it's already been taken care of. And because it's already been taken care of, we can have joy. Joy in our minds, joy in our spirit, joy in our hearts. Because the joy of the Lord is our salvation. So right now, God, we're going to praise you. We're going to worship you. We're going to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're going to lift you up knowing and believing that when the praises go up, that the blessings are going to come down. We're going to lift you up knowing and believing that when we sit, send our voices up to you, Father, you'll send a voice back to our spirit that says, it is well. You send a voice back to us that said, it is okay. You send a voice back to us that says, it's going to be all right. And because it's going to be all right, we can give you the praise. We can give you the honor. We can give you the glory today. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise today. Come on, praise him right now. Give him some praise. You made a way. You made a way. You can go back to your seat. Yes, you made a way. He moves mountains. Give God some praise if he made a way in your life. Amen, amen. Come on, give our music ministry a great big hand clap. Give God some praise. Amen, even for them. Good morning, Mount Zion. How's everybody doing on this morning? Are you just happy to be alive? Somebody say amen. Are you happy to be in God's house? Somebody say hallelujah. So good to see you even on this Sunday morning. I want you to prepare your minds and hearts for our tithe and offering period, for our giving time. But before we go into that, we're going to play our ministry announcements, which will show us all the great things that God is doing here at Mount Zion. We want to connect with you. God has blessed us with the ability to impact many people and we want to make sure you're included. We've produced over 1,000 virtual Bible studies and teachings, executed numerous outreach projects and impactful events. We want to make sure everyone has access. For the months of September and October, make sure you fill out a Connect contact card. They can be found in the bulletin, pews, and at the Connect desk in the foyer. It's always good to stay connected to God's house. Weekly, we serve the community and countless families through our food pantry. You can join this effort and show your generosity. 
We are looking for those interested in being a monthly sponsor. Sponsorship levels will be listed in our bulletin, and those who give towards this endeavor will have the food pantry named after their family for one month. So secure your month today. There's power in prayer. Join our live phone prayer ministry at 12 noon, Monday through Friday, and at 7 a.m. on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Call 609-663-0085. Join our kids and student ministries for Harvest Fest with games, activities, and prizes on Sunday, October 30th. Special guests will be Jungle Bob with his famous pets, also, the Village of Oakwood will be hosting and partnering with us on their annual Magic and Fun Show on Friday, October 28th from 6 to 8 p.m. Wear your costumes and join in on the fun. This winter, we have families identified that need coats and children that need gifts. Bring in brand new or gently used coats for men, women, or children and place it on the rack in the foyer. Also, this year we are delivering gifts to children around the world for Christmas. Pick up a shoebox for small gifts in the foyer or call the church for further information on how to participate. We need you to turn them in by Sunday, November 13th. Let's bless others this season. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to know about Jesus? Do you want to be baptized? At this moment, grab your cell phone and turn your camera on and face it towards the QR code on the screen. That will lead you to our website where you can let us know about your decision and we can show you the next steps. Lastly, head to the Connect Desk and pick up a free gift book called The Best Is Yet To Come. Congratulations on your decision. We would like you to consider giving a special in-year offering. As our building is close to surpassing the 20 years mark, we will need to do major maintenance on our heating and cooling units. This cost can be upwards of $200,000. If we all give together, we believe we can do it, but we also believe that God will bless you for your giving. We are asking each family to give $100, $500, $1,000 or more. If 200 people were to give $1,000, we can meet our goal. We thank you in advance for your faithfulness. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3. 6 through 12, as we stand at the attention of God, Malachi 3, 6 through 12. And we're going to read that responsibly. The Bible says this, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now and herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. Let's bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God. Thanking God for all of the resources that he's given us. Know today that all we have and all will ever be is because of God's grace and for God's mercy. Thank you to all of those who give in the many ways that you're able to give, even through the worship service, while others give, gave, giving online or text to give or even the Givelify app through our website for those that are watching us online. Thank you for giving. Also to those that even give through the mail. I believe that God will bless you for making a way and finding a way to give back to him because we know today 
when we give back to God, what we have left will go further than if we had kept everything to ourselves. So let's thank God for this act of worship through giving. And also thank God for all of the things that he's done and that he's given toward us. Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift you up and magnify your name. Father, today, we don't give grudgingly, but we give cheerfully, knowing, God, that your mercy endures forever, and also your blessings overflow in our lives. We give you all the praise, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all tithers, you can come right now, and we're giving a tithe and an offering. You can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets, even online. You can give using the Givelify app. It's giving time here in God's house. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Let us all stand, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given. church say amen amen why don't you wave at somebody all across the building before you see it just wave at somebody give them a smile today let them know that it's good to see them on this Sunday morning if you have a Bible with you say amen amen if you have a Bible turn it to the book of John John chapter 5 John chapter 5 and thank you again to our praise team and choir and our musicians for blessing us on this Sunday morning they bless us every single week. John chapter 5, if you have your Bible, the book of John in the New Testament. John chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. And I'm going to read the voice version of the text, which just gleams it a little more clearer for this particular situation and story. But John chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. And let us go to God in prayer before we go into the text. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We lift you up. We thank you, God, for being a way maker. We thank you, God, for speaking words into our mind and our body and our soul. Father, inhabit this place. Hide me behind your cross as I speak your word. I believe in your power. I believe also in your grace and your mercy. I believe, God, that you have the power to turn situations around. So whatever we need to be turned around, God, we pray that today will be a day of breakthrough, a day of deliverance, and a day where you... Feed into our spirit something great, something mighty, something awesome today. Let your people hear your word. Fill you in this place. Bread of heaven, feed us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. The Bible says this. The Bible says, 
When these events were completed, Jesus led his followers to Jerusalem, where they would celebrate a Jewish feast together. In Jerusalem, they came upon a pool by the Sheep Gate, surrounded by five covered porches. In Hebrew, this place is called Bethesda. Somebody say Bethesda. Crowds of people lined the area, lying around the porches. All of these people, they were disabled in some way. Some were blind, some were lame, some were paralyzed or plagued by diseases. And they were waiting for the waters to move. From time to time, a heavenly messenger would come to stir the water in the pool. Whoever reached the water first and got in after it was agitated would be healed of his or her diseases. In the crowd, Jesus noticed one particular man who had been living with his disability for 38 years. He knew this man had been waiting here for a very long time. So what Jesus did is he talked to this disabled man and he said, are you here in this place hoping to be healed. The disabled man said, kind sir, I wait like all of these other people for the waters to stir, but I cannot walk. He says, I am to be healed in the water. Someone must carry me in this pool. If, if I'm going to be healed, somebody needs to bring me into the pool. Without a helping hand, someone else beats me to the water's edge each time that the water is stirred. And you know what Jesus said in verse 8? He said, stand up carry your mat and walk. You know what I want us all to learn today from the word of God, and I think this man had been sick for many years and, and has now learned, is that hope for the future depends on your ability to walk away from what you can't do and walk towards what God can do for you. You know, recently I've begun a new ministry and a new training of administrators and teachers and leaders on the concept of work-life balance. And what I learned and what I'm learning from this new venture is that many people fail to find the proper balance in their lives and have problems reaching their goals simply because they aren't self-aware of what their actions or what their inactions is doing to their lives. They feel something, but they don't notice it. They, they get all the signs, but they don't acknowledge the signs. We, we studied together and we read some articles uh, from the Harvard Business Review, I believe it was, and, and we saw something that really hit me very hard, and it parallels our text today. The article spoke about how sometimes you've got to pause and de denormalize your situation. Sometimes defeat can become normal to us. Sometimes living a bad life can become normal to us. Sometimes going in the wrong direction can become normal in our lives. Sometimes a lack of faith can become normal to us. And so when I think of this concept, it brings me to the very story about this man. This man, he had this tingling feeling in his back, and he suffered from this pain in his back, and he did nothing about it. Because he felt that this issue wasn't too serious because it would come and go, this, this tingling in his back. And the truth is, he wasn't in any severe pain. He wasn't uh, super uncomfortable because all he had was just a tingling, an occasional tingling feeling in his back. And so for months, he paid no attention to it, thinking that it wasn't much, that it wasn't much. And, and you know, he was saying to himself, he said, after all, uh, I thought it was something, if I thought it was something serious, if I thought the pain was more than it was, then I'd go to the doctor. But see, as time went on, this man with the tingling feeling did begin to start feeling that tingling feeling more often. As, as, as it went untreated, he, he began to feel it more often. And, and as a result of the lack of treatment, that small tingling feeling in his back spread to his legs and began to occur more frequently. And the longer he put this tingling feeling off, the worse the condition seemed to get. So as time went on, he had, to, he had to face the reality that something was wrong beyond a mere tingling in his back. And it was at that moment that things started to turn around. And that, my friend, is a good principle in life. See, if you don't pick up, if you don't pick up on what's holding you back, then you can never move forward. If you don't pick up on what's holding you back, you can never get your healing. 
If you don't denormalize your pain, you can't fix your pain. I think it was the great writer by the name of James Baldwin who once said this. He said, you can't fix what you can't face. You know, one thing I've noticed about life is that just like the man at the pool of Bethesda, your conditions will remain and even get worse and spread to other areas of your life if you don't denormalize at the right time. Think about it. What, what started out as just a financial challenge all of a sudden turned into a relational or a marital problem? What started out just as a lump on your body turned into a health condition? What started out as just shortness of breath or tightness in your chest cert suddenly turned out to become a life-changing condition? What started out to be just a misunderstanding on your job suddenly turned out to be an issue in human resources. What started out as a problem in one area has now bled over into another area. All because when it was localized, when it was just a mere tingle, you did not get it in check and stop it dead in its track and denormalize it. See, that's what we see in our text today. In the book of John, chapter 5, it says a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. How many know 38 years is a long time? 38 years is a long time to be dealing with something. 38 years is a very long time. Has anybody ever dealt with something for 38 years? That's a long time, again, to be suffering from anything. Things can get to feel normal after 38 years. And so in the text, we have Jesus coming to the sick man in Bethesda, asking him the question, do you want to be made well? And so the man, he doesn't answer yes or no. What the man does, he simply says this. He says, I have no man to put me in the pool. And every time I get a shot at it to get in the pool, people step in front of me. You see, instead of answering the question, the man went straight to what he didn't have. Instead of answering the question, he went straight until he, into, into what he had a lack of. Instead of getting what he needed, he went to what normally happens in his life. Instead of seeing the opportunity, the man went straight to why he couldn't get better. You know, the truth of the matter is our current reality can also block our future reality. Our current situation can block us from our future situation. What we think is the normal end of things, what we think is the normal order of things can block blessings, can block the blessings from God who does not see things the way that we see it. He doesn't see the things the way, the way we want to see it. But at the end of the day, he sees it another way. You see, the man at the pool could only see his problem even while he was facing the problem solver. Jesus asked the man, do you want to get better? And the man says this. He says, I can't get better. That's a prime example of life. So many people, so many people are living beneath their level of divine potential because they simply don't believe that God wants better for their lives. They simply are living an insecure life. And it's because it's become normal for them. And here's another thing that, that makes things worse. Unfortunately, our world is, is, is leaning people towards this type of insecurity. Think about it. When you go online, you see how others are living, and it makes people uncertain about their own life. It makes people insecure about their own life. And so, what, once again, what we're seeing is that a distorted reality is becoming an everyday occurrence. A, store, a distorted reality of what's normal. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they have. Look at what is going on in their life. And so, so, so at the end of the day, we have a distorted view of what's normal. Think about our young people. The question uh, is asked uh, uh, to young people, do you want to feel better about yourself? And so the answer we give them is, then get better grades in school. We give them the answer, strive hard to be accepted in your sports team. Buy a new wardrobe so you can fit in with the trends. But, but what happens when we falter and feel as though we're not smart enough? What happens when you find out that you're not a good athlete? What happens when someone calls you ugly or calls you unattractive? Then, then their self-esteem and their self-worth will crumble. 
resulting in paralyzed insecurity that prevents them from seeing themselves as God sees them. So they become just like the man at the pool saying that I can get better. So the man at the pool of Bethesda became so uncomfortable. He became, excuse me, so comfortable, so comfortable in his condition and in his insecurity that came with it that he no longer came looking to be better or came looking to be whole. He just stood at the pool watching others pass by. And that became the normal situation for him. You see, there lies the problem because when our setbacks and our insecurities and our challenges become normal for us, that's when we can miss the life-saving power of God. That's when we can miss what God can do in your life. When I, when I think of this concept, I think of the story about this middle-aged woman, if you will, by the name of Gina who had a heart attack one day. And, and Gina had to be taken to the hospital. And while in the hospital, she had to have this operation. And, and while on the operating table, she had a near-death experience. And in this experience, what happened to Gina is she saw God and was able to talk to God. And the first question that Gina wanted to ask God, she said, God, is my time up? And God answered Gina, and God said, no, your time is not up. He said, actually, Gina, you have another 43 years, two months, and eight days to live. And so Gina woke up from the surgery, and she was rejoicing. She said, God is good. She began to recover, and upon her recovery, Gina decided to stay in the hospital. She said, I'm going to go in, I'm going to stay since I've got 43 more years. I'm going to get me a facelift and a liposuction and get me a tummy tuck. She even had her beautician come into the hospital and style her hair and give her a new hair color, ladies. After all, since she has so much more time to live, she figured that she might as well make the most of it. So after this uh, 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 makeover operation, she was released from the hospital. However, while crossing the street from the hospital, she was hit by a car. She got hit and was instantly killed by an ambulance. Well, upon this accident, of course, Gina instantly arrived in heaven. And right at the gate, she demanded to see God. Can I get an amen to that? And when she finally got to meet God, she was very upset. And so she demanded that there be some answers from God. So she shouted unto God. She said, I thought you said that I had another 40 years. And God looked back at her and replied, he said, I didn't recognize you. Now, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you today. But the more of the story is, we've got to knock down the walls in our lives that can block the blessings that are coming in our way. The truth is, Gina didn't have to get a liposuction and a tummy tuck. Gina just had to say, thank you, Lord, for giving me some more days on this earth. See, the truth is, our insecurities can block us from God's best for our lives. Truth is, leaning on the losses of our past can block us from God's deliverance in your life. I learned a great lesson from the story of this man uh, at the pool of Bethesda. He gives this sob story, if we go back into the text for a minute and then I'm finished. He gives a long sob story of why he hasn't gotten better all these years. And right after, after the, the man gave all his reasons, after the man answers and gives all of his excuses, he told Jesus about his roadblocks. He told Jesus about his defeats. And Jesus made one simple statement. He said this. He said, rise, take your bed, and walk. Somebody say this. Say, rise, take your bed, walk. Now, what I want you to know and what I want you to equate to your own life today is just like he did with this man, Jesus sees the moments when we're helping. Jesus knows when you're struggling. Jesus knows when you're trying to find your way. Jesus knows when you're trying to find some balance. Jesus knows when you're trying to compensate for the challenge. Jesus knows when you're going in the wrong direction. Now, let me try to say it in regular terms. Well, let me also say it in Scripture. So who can separate us from the love of Christ? Who can come between us and the love of God's anointed? Can troubles come between us? 
Can hardships come between us? Can persecution come between us? Can hunger come between us? Can poverty come between us? Can danger come between us? Can even death come between us? And the answer is no. Somebody needs to say nothing can come between me and God. The Bible says this, for Jesus is some high priest. It's not some high priest who has no sympathy for our weaknesses and our flaws. He's already been tested in every way that we are tested. He emerges victorious without failing God. Since God cares for you, let him carry all your burdens and all your worries. I'm just going to read a little bit of text right now. An earthly father expresses love for his children. It is no different with our heavenly father. God shows his love for those who revere him. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. So what am I trying to get out by these texts? Let me put it this way. The man at the pool was helpless all alone in the world. He had no family, maybe no friends available to help. But with no friend in the world, he still had a friend in Jesus. With no friend in the world, Jesus still came in his direction. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you still got a friend in Jesus. Jesus wants to heal your body. Jesus wants to make you whole. Jesus wants to help you in your business. Jesus wants to help you in your family. Jesus wants to help you in your relationships. Jesus wants you to put the past behind you. But here's how the story ends. But you got to be willing to pick up your mat and walk. Now, what do I need to walk into? You've got to walk into your deliverance. You've got to walk into your blessing. You've got to walk into your destiny. You've got to walk into your healing. You've got to walk into your promotion. You've got to walk into your future. You've got to walk into your faith. You've got to walk by faith and not by sight. And if you can do it today, I want you to give God some praise that you're going to pick up your mat and you're going to walk. You've got to walk. Somebody in this place has got to pick up your mat and walk. Pick up your mat and walk. Stand with me right quick. Check this out. Check this out. Here in the text, we see a prime example of the Lord's power. Somebody say power. See, when, 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 when he denormalized his situation, when the man at the pool of Bethesda, when he denormalized his situation, when he finally realized that his situation was not normal. When he obeyed the command of the Lord, his situation changed in an instant. See, the truth is, he didn't know he was healed until he obeyed Jesus. See, Jesus didn't pronounce a word of healing in his life. He, he didn't say, man, you're healed. He simply commanded the man at the pool of Bethesda to act. And in that act, the man was asked, Basically, to denormalize his situation and walk by faith. So he had two choices. If he believed, he would be able to arise and walk. If he did not believe, he would stay in his current situation. Doing things the same way that he'd been doing them for 38 long years. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to, but everybody in this place can experience the healing power of Jesus Christ. If you believe him, if you obey him, he will fix it for you. The problem is we believe our problems more than the problem solver. So I want to ask you the question, will you pick up your mat and will you walk? Will you walk into your blessing? Will you walk into your deliverance? Will you walk into your healing? Will you walk into your promotion? Will you walk into what God wants to do in your life? You've got to take the step even right now today. I want to pray for you right now. Let us bow our heads if you're here today. Let us all stand at the attention of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that even in our situation, we can pick up our bed and we can walk. We believe that you're right at our door. You want us to not feel like what we're going through is normal because we serve a supernatural God. So we believe right now in your supernatural healing. We believe in your supernatural grace. We believe right now that if there's somebody here today that hasn't understood that their situation is not a normal situation, but with God, all things are possible. With you, healing is possible. With you, deliverance is possible. With you, grace is possible. 
With you, mercy is possible. With you, God, miracles happen every single day. So, Father, today we choose to walk by faith. We're going to pick up our mats today, and we're going to walk. Walk into the newness of life. Walk into the grace of Jesus Christ. Walk into faith in you. And, Father, we love you. We magnify you. And we praise your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. If you believe it today, I want you to give God a hand clap of praise. Listen, as you remain standing in God's house today, I want to offer Christ to somebody in the building here today. There's somebody in this place that needs to say yes to Jesus. How many of you knew that at the end of the day when you said yes to Jesus, he makes things better? When you say yes to Jesus, he makes things all right. If you said yes to Jesus before, I want you to raise your hand. If you're a believer today, raise your hand. If you're a believer today, raise your hand. If your hand's not raised right now, I want to offer Christ to you. I know and believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins so that you will have access to eternal life today. I don't want anybody in this place to not have access to eternal life. There's a card right now in your bulletin. There's a card in the pews. There's a card in the connect desk right at the entrance where you leave out to your right. I pray that you would fill out that card if you want to accept Jesus into your life. And you need to be baptized. If you haven't been baptized, I want you to fill out that card. And I believe that when you take that first step, the next steps will get better and better today. I believe that we, we need to bring you into the church and bring you into a place of safety through Jesus Christ and through a belief in his word today. If you need special prayer today, I want you to raise your hand. Just speaking to anybody today who needs special prayer. I see hands across the building. I see hands right now. I want to pray with you for a moment. Keep that hand raised, and we're going to touch and believe that God will answer that prayer, and he'll bring you closer to the blessed life right now. Let us bow our heads before we go. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for hands that are raised, knowing and believing, God, that you will heal, that you'll deliver. Whatever they're going through right now, help them to know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Father, today, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, even in this day of worship, that you give them a sense of ease right now that it's already been done, that it's already been healed, and that you have deliverance on the way. We praise you. We magnify you. We give you all the honor and the glory today. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people claim the victory. And everybody says, amen. Come on, say amen. Amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise one more time. Hey, consider yourselves dismissed. I'm living the blessed life.